Hello, this video is going to focus on a particular aspect of the signs of the times that most of us either don't know about or don't fully understand or appreciate. It is something called the times of the Gentiles, which is a key phrase that is used by prophets, apostles, and even Christ himself to describe a specific period of time just before the second coming of the Lord. There is a fantastic BYU speech by President Benson in 1981 that describes this in just amazing detail, and I encourage each of you to read it. But uh, from this talk, it says that the Lord has designed these days in which we live as the times of the Gentiles. The Gentile nations are the so-called Christian nations, North and South America, and the European nations from which many of us come. The phrase times of the Gentiles refers to that period of time extending from when the gospel was restored to the world in 1830 to when the gospel will again be preached to the Jews after the Gentiles have rejected it. When Christ appeared to those on the American continent, for which we have the account beginning in 3 Nephi chapter 11, he spends the next three days with them teaching, blessing, and healing. These remaining chapters in 3 Nephi are among some of the most powerful and important scriptures that we have. Why? Because this is the cliff notes to everything Christ spent three years teaching in and around Jerusalem. He had three days to teach the people everything they needed to know about the gospel. And unlike the Bible, none of this was passed down for thousands of years through multiple translations, etc. This is about as firsthand and unfiltered as you can get. This summarizes the entire gospel of Jesus Christ. So what does he tell us? Well, he starts by talking about baptism. He then goes and organizes the church by calling the disciples. He then gives the Sermon on the Mount, which talks about the fulfillment of the law of Moses and the higher law that we should all be living. He then shows them the Lord's Prayer. Then he institutes the sacrament. And then after that, and for almost the rest of all of 3 Nephi and his entire time with them, he talks about the last days, and specifically the time of the Gentiles and the time of the Jews. Now, this is what we're going to talk about today, because this is very important, and Christ spends the majority of the time talking with them that is for us in our day. Wilford Woodruff describes this time. He says, the gospel is now restored to us Gentiles, for we are all Gentiles in a national capacity, and it will continue with us if we are faithful until the law is bound and the testimony sealed, and the times of the Gentiles are fulfilled, when it will again revert to the Jews, whom the Lord will have prepared to receive it. They will gather to their own lands, taking with them their gold and silver, and will rebuild their city and temple, according to the prediction of Moses and the prophets. When this time arrives, which is nigh, even at our doors, let the Gentile nations who reject the gospel, which is now sent to them, prepare to meet the judgments of an offended God. For when their cup is full, even to the brim, the Lord will then remember the chastisements of the Jews, his favored people, and at whose hands they will have received double for their iniquities. Woe well unto the Gentiles! who have administered afflictions to the Jews for these many years. For the awful calamities spoken of in these books, the Bible and the Book of Mormon, will certainly befall them. So if we're to look at this on some kind of a timeline, we have the time of the Gentiles that started from 1830 and goes to some point in our future where the times of the Gentiles are fulfilled. And then there is the time of the Jews after that. So we are sitting in this time period right here, very near the end, before the time of the Gentiles is fulfilled. As most of us know, the second coming is not a singular event. Christ appears to different groups prior to his coming where everyone will witness it. His first appearance is to those who have gathered in the New Jerusalem. Then he appears to the Jews after saving them from a hostile army. Then another appearance to the rest of the world. All of these, according to Doctrine and Covenants 133, happens after the time of the Gentiles is fulfilled. So if you look at the chapters in 3 Nephi, you can start with chapter 16, but then chapters 20, 21, and 22 as well. These chapters all talk about these events with the times of the Jews and the time of the Gentiles being described. 
As I was studying these chapters, I realized that Christ, in his description to the people, was going between talking about the times of the Gentiles and the time of the Jews, to going back and forth. And it started, for me, becoming kind of confusing. So I decided to color code it. Every time he was talking about the time of the Gentiles, I would color it in purple. And every time he was talking about the times of the Jews, I would color it in green. And this is what it came out to look like. So you can see it was kind of hard to, to follow along. You know, I also noticed that the exact same topics and events were covered multiple times across various chapters, but never within the same chapter. I've discussed this before, how in the scriptures, anything that is repeated is meant to convey how important it is. And some of these topics are discussed several times just in 3rd Nephi alone, let alone in other scripture. So I decided to start aligning these uh, elements of scripture together. So when I was looking at them, I, I first said, okay, let's put all of the scriptures that refer to the time of the Gentiles together and group those. And then let's group all of the scriptures referring to those time of the Jews after that, because that's a period that's going to happen after. And so by doing that, we start getting a little closer to a chronology, although it's really more topical. Then by doing that, we can align chapter by chapter all of those elements, those, uh, those pieces that are talking about the same event or the same topic together and kind of link and reference those together. And we started seeing something like, like this. Then the next thing I did is I went through and there's a, a lot of warnings in these chapters. And so I highlighted all of the warnings in red. I was also surprised to find, or maybe I shouldn't have been surprised, but all of the warnings are for the time of the Gentiles. There are no warnings for the time of the Jews. So once I put all that together, I said, well, this might be interesting for people to look at. So for those of you who are interested, you can go out to my website, gospeldoctrine.us, and you can download this study guide for 3rd Nephi 16, 20, 21, and 22, where it has looked at all of these things specifically around the time of the Gentiles and the time of the Jews. And you can see these topics. And when you have these topics selected like this, you get greater insight and detail and color and context on each of these things by reading them in sections or topically which kind of aligned to chronology, which adds a lot of deeper insight, which I found very interesting and, and insightful. What you're going to do as you go through this uh, and see is it really starts at the very beginning, from the end of the time of the Nephites all the way to the founding of this promised land for the purpose of, of establishing and, and restoring the gospel of Jesus Christ through Joseph Smith. So it, it starts talking about that. It talks about the restoration through Joseph Smith, and it talks about the coming forth of the Book of Mormon, and then has a number of things that happen in the, the period of time just before the end or the fulfillment of the time of the Gentiles. And that's where that piece ends. Then it goes into the time of the Jews, and you can see what happens after that time. So this six-page guide, I, I hope you find valuable. So what did I learn? First and foremost, we are all Gentiles. And among the Gentiles are those who both believe in the gospel of Jesus Christ and those who reject the gospel. We are all called and referred to as Gentiles. And all of the warnings are talking to both those groups, both those that believe and those who have rejected it. Second, while the Gentiles are accepting and living the gospel, we prosper and are protected. Also, the unbelieving Gentiles will cause great calamities to come upon us, and that the time of the Gentiles is almost fulfilled. There's also some very specific warnings, and granted, there's lots of warnings, but when the same warning is repeated over and over again, we really ought to pay attention. So what were some of the warnings that really stood out and had uh, multiple references to them? Well, here's one such, but if uh, you read it, it's really saying that, look, if you don't believe the Book of Mormon, you're going to be cut off from the church and his covenants, which I don't suppose should surprise any of us. Secondly, if the Gentiles don't repent, the sword of justice will fall upon you. Okay, again, probably not a lot of surprise there, but this next one is, is very, very interesting, especially combined with that Wilford Woodruff quote uh, from before. It says, I mean, essentially, it says that if the Gentiles reject the gospel, everything done against the Jews over the centuries will come upon the Gentiles. 
you know, I hear people say all the time that the second coming must be very, very soon because, quote, how much worse can it get? Well, when I read that and when I read that Wilfred Woodruff quote, I go, wow, it can get a whole lot worse. Also, it says that the, the Gentiles will reject the gospel to the point it will be pulled from them. Does that mean no more missionary work? Does that mean that we won't um, be proselyting out in the world? I don't know. But they will reject it and it will be pulled from them. You know, as the Gentiles reject the gospel, we should expect calamities to come upon the world more and more frequently with greater and greater ferocity. So how close are we to some of these events? Well, you know, if we look at the growth of the church, we are still growing. Thankfully, we, the world is not fully rejecting the, the gospel of Jesus Christ because we're still growing, although it is at a lower growth rate year over year. You can see the green line here represents the year over year growth rate of the church, and it is declining. We also see that the number of missionaries entering the mission field uh, is, is still very, very strong. And yet, even with the increased number of missionaries over time, the convert baptisms have kind of plateaued and maybe even dropped off a little bit. Uh, I wonder, does this mean that we're at some kind of a tipping point? That, uh, still maybe a, a ways away from the end of the times of the Gentiles where they have fully rejected it. But is this a tipping point where we start seeing slower and slower growth rates or greater and greater declines in terms of missionary success? I, I don't know. From that article that I mentioned before, the Ezra Taft Benson article from 1981, it says that, you know, for after your testimony cometh the testimony of earthquakes that shall cause groanings. And let me just paraphrase here, thunderings and lightnings and tempests and waves of the sea heaving themselves beyond their bounds and all things shall be in commotion and men's hearts shall fail them. An, over, uh, an overflowing scourge uh, shall be across the land, a desolating sickness, um, earthquakes also in diverse places and many desolations. Uh, they will take up the sword one against another, and they will kill one another, and there shall be blood and fire and vapors of smoke. And then even right before uh, this, the second coming, the sun shall be darkened and the moon shall be turned to blood, and the stars shall fall from heaven. As more and more Gentiles reject the gospel, these are the things that are going to be coming up, uh, upon us more and more. You know, when I was doing my family scripture study uh, with my, my girls uh, a few weeks ago, my oldest daughter said, Dad, do you realize that almost all of those have happened just in the last month? <laughs> um, it's uh, kind of scary times. Notice how at the beginning of this quote it says, for after your testimony cometh the testimony of all these calamities. What will stop these calamities from occurring? Your testimony. When we share the gospel, when we are helping the Gentiles not reject it but embrace it, as the gospel grows and grows, as the church grows and grows, as, as individual members' faith grow, we can stop and stave these, these uh, calamities from occurring, these natural disasters from occurring. For as we reject the gospel, these will come upon us. These verses in 3rd Nephi make it very, very clear that if we will repent, if we will be faithful, if we will not reject the gospel, we can avoid these things and still move into the millennium and have the second coming. But if we reject them, these will come upon us. Unfortunately, it also says, hey, I know they're going to come upon you. Um, so I think uh, he, we know the writing on the wall, but this is up to us. And he gives us many opportunities to, to repent, to uh, spread the gospel, to grow in faith, uh, to avoid these things. Going back to that, the same talk that Ezra Taft Benson said, he goes, you must learn and be guided by personal revelation and the counsel of the living prophet, or you, so you will not be deceived. He also said, saints of Zion, do you realize that we are living in the days of the fulfillment of those signs and wonders? You are among those who will see many of these prophecies fulfilled. Wilfred Woodruff in 1894 said, can you tell me where the people are who will be shielded and protected from these great calamities and judgments, which are even now at our doors? 
I'll tell you, the priesthood of God who honor their priesthood and who are worthy of their blessings are the ones who shall have the safety and protection. But he even goes on to say that not even this people will escape them entirely. Ezra Taft Benson said, will you be among those who are faithful to the end? Will you endure? Are you prepared? Can you live in the world and not partake of the sins of the world? You know, even in this most recent general conference that just happened a few weeks ago, Elder Quentin L. Cook talked about the 200-year hinge point. I uh, said, you know, unfortunately, 4th Nephi describes a dramatic change that began in the year 200 and the first year when iniquity and division destroyed righteousness and unity. And he called it the 200-year hinge point and that we are at the same 200-year hinge point in our church history. D. Todd Christofferson uh, kind of said the same thing. He goes, sustainability is not guaranteed, and a thriving society can fail in time if it abandons the cardinal virtues that uphold its peace and prosperity. So I do wonder, are we at a tipping point right now where the Gentiles, both within and out of the church, are rejecting the gospel to the point that we're bringing upon us these calamities? Jesus Christ said, and whosoever will hearken unto my words and repenteth and is baptized, the same shall be saved. Search the prophets, for many there be that testify of these things. 